Yeah, very difficult evening. Uh, I think the one thing we uh, wanted to avoid by taking on such a big game, big opponent early uh, in our preparation was this outcome. Uh, if we had avoided this outcome, I think we would only be taking positives. Uh, yeah, I feel a big responsibility because I knew how big of a step this would be. Also was aware of the English League finishing May 11th. They got their holiday. They got in two weeks before us that they would be in this place. Um, but was was aggressive and ambitious in, in having the game when it was. Hoped that we'd be in a, a controlled position at 60 minutes because the minds probably would have carried the bodies at that point. But the bodies had gone and it became very difficult. And at that point, could have been smarter in protecting the players in organisation because the distances got way too big on the ball. And some of the great decision making we had in the first half had gone. Yeah, so it's going to feel like two games. Uh, Analysing the first 55, 60 minutes and getting and throwing out the last 30, 35 minutes into the bin very quickly because I don't think there'll be anything worth taking from that. Uh, due to the yeah the, the the level where we're at physically, which is normal, but the organisation that didn't help the players at that point. Okay, uh, so so you you were saying uh, in, the, in the first half we we uh, took some good decisions. Uh, yeah, you what you. What should they have done in the second half to avoid? Yeah, we. <laughs> I don't think I'll be ready to talk like this till tomorrow because the only feeling is is it's a tough night and uh, uh, should have protected the players a bit more. But yeah, tomorrow we have to turn the page. First half, yeah, we scored the first goal. We had chances before the first goal. The second goal, just yeah, this stuff happens in football. Shouldn't uh, we shouldn't have allowed that, and it did happen. We should take the lead in the first half. And then we come in the second half, we should take the lead in the second half. Yeah, 30 seconds later, it's 2-1. But at that point, uh, I think the game is still under control and the belief. Third goal changed the game at the point of, of maximum fatigue. So, yeah, first 55 minutes, good defending, very good to keep their special players off the ball, which was different later. In attack, really struggled on build-up. And once we got the first free player, I thought Lika, Vic and Jill Rod were very good at, at getting the right space at the right time. Lynette was causing big problems. Yeah, so I, I, the wind whistle went. I knew I was going to be analysing a shorter game, um, which is 60 minutes. There'd be no point in looking any further because I let them down. At that point, the organisation should have been a lot safer more defensive because the legs had gone in England. Yeah, just getting fresher and fresher with, with their changes. With the home crowd, we felt it once or twice in the first half. In the second half, it was just, uh, yeah, the flags and the noise coming from the home crowd, which is an experience we needed to learn. Yeah, tough night. We'll grab some things once we, once we wake up tomorrow. Uh, this is our third top opponent we've faced. Uh, Brazil, we felt we should have won. France, we weren't good and didn't deserve to draw or, or win. Yeah, tonight, uh, I think England will be favourites in the Euros. Where they're at, the qualities of players, the home crowd, um, the resources that the WSL have been putting in, the work the clubs have been doing. Yeah, you add all that up, it's it's uh, it's very hard to see that they're not favourites. And we should take the lead two or three times in this game. What happens at that point? Yeah, I think the game still gets very difficult. Um, but we'll probably leave a little bit better than we did tonight. You said? So, 5-1, what does that do? Uh, that's horrible to hear. Yeah, it's it's the only answer at that point is, yeah, it's a tough night move on quickly, Belarus on Tuesday, um, who will be ready to take lessons from a game that you lose 5-1, but uh, we have to. And and I said it before and I'm saying it now that well, we have a lot to learn or a little to learn and we have a lot 
but what are the two, three most important things before Belarus? And the speed of Belarus probably helps us because we haven't got actually time to, to argue or discuss too much. We've just got to grab the next key things. They will be there tomorrow. And uh, after some space and, and uh, let some steam off, I'm sure Sunday and Monday will be positive days building to Tuesday. Yes, go ahead. I'm up. Um, first off, you said the Netherlands are a couple of weeks behind. How much of that is, how concerning is that going into your when I say a couple of weeks behind, yeah, now you're saying, well, okay, so then you start the tournament two weeks behind. No, um, it's, uh, if you look at England last week against Belgium, the ability to play uh, their performance and the quality of their performance, of course, the difference in today is night and day. Uh, but also the availability of players, the players that can play 90 minutes. Yeah, I hope we're there in seven days and we've got two games to get there. Uh, so it's, it's not as simple as we're playing catch up. Um, only one or two other countries. Well, no one is as early as England. I think one or two countries were close. Um, when you push too too quick, too fast, you pick up injuries. We're not going to do that. Um, so we built we built some quality minutes tonight. Um, some players, yeah, Jill Rod, I think really pushed through the last 10, 15. It was it, the game got stretched. And it was tough for her. I think Dominique Janssen also was put in a place to push a lot. Yeah, they're going to feel. Not good tonight physically, but Tuesday that will pay off. Next week that will pay off at the start of the Euros. The only thing I'm worried about is the uh, the emotion of when you say the scoreline. Yeah, it's it's and and the feeling of the last 30 minutes. If if we can uh, accept that, feel feel shit, uh, be sad, upset, but wake up tomorrow and get ready to move forward. Yeah, I think good times are ahead. But um, only if we embrace embrace that, because it is what it is. Yeah, I was saying it yesterday. You probably saw uh, the training. Yeah, whether it's a, a possession game or it's small-sided, um, they are very, very competitive. The small-sided games end of training yesterday. Yeah, the the uh, the winning team of a small-sided wanted to to take me out for dinner and and a drink, and then the losers couldn't even look at me. Um, they just want to win everything, which. Is going to make yeah make tonight and tomorrow morning pretty difficult, but that's a good thing. And uh, I've said it since I got here: the competitiveness and the the winning mindset is a big positive. Makes moments like this very difficult, but it yeah it, it's something we we had to get through. Uh, this tough opponent, tough game, wanted to avoid this outcome. Now we got to face it, and we got a choice. We can we can start pulling away from each other that just doesn't exist in this group, or it's going to pull us tighter. Yeah, I put a lot of money that we're going to be tighter and stronger from it. One more, if I may. Um, how good is this? I know you said England's one of the best. How good is this England team? Yeah, very, very good. Um, yeah, I think opponents watching the last 30 will be very worried. Um, we made it easy at that point, or I made it easy at that point by not tightening it up. Uh, the thing is, yeah, you've got a top, top coach that's been there uh, and won it. Um, and also Arian with Serena uh, doing superb work, and the the investment. Uh, eleven years I left. Eleven years ago I left England. Uh, at that point, it felt like football, uh, giving women's football what they deserve was. Yeah, it's a responsibility. We need to do it. And now in England, people are looking at it as an opportunity, an opportunity to develop world class players, an opportunity to make money. You know, people are here to watch women's football. It's, it's an investment, uh, and I think the WSL has led the way in financial investment. Just from our conversation yesterday, Sky Sports and many other companies now putting uh, big investment to uh, to show women's football. It's all adding up, yeah. Which which is what this is about, and uh, yeah, we're trying to to do continue to do important and good work in the Netherlands. The Eredivisie continues to grow. The clubs and the coaches doing superb work. But uh, yeah, the uh, the euros or the pound difference investment is is big, but that's huge credit to WSL, and I think they they are leading the way in in in, in the investment side. It's paying off for for uh, the country and and also the national team. Fun team, great team. Um, we're going to be much more prepared next time we face them.
Yes, go ahead. Yeah, just minutes. She, she knew she was on 45. Uh, also, Stafe come off. Every, every substitution was periodization, was minutes. Uh, it was fun to see Liga back on the pitch. Um, but you can see yeah, more when other players. Uh, Dan, yeah, just if someone said to me in November, Dan will play in preparation against England, it would have been uh, felt, felt too quick and not possible. So eventually tomorrow we'll start to wake up to some big positives. Uh, yeah, getting uh, Caitlin on at half time playing centre back against England. She took a big step tonight. I'm really impressed. Esme, you see her, her creativity, her freedom. Um, and we also saw great things from Vic, who continues to grow for us. And yeah, like I said, Gerard, Vic, and Lika make us a very different team in the first half because of their fluidity. So yeah, uh, I wish I had everyone available uh, like our opponent. That wasn't the case, but that was by design. And uh, yeah, we got punished for it tonight. She went down in the first half. She yeah, no, nothing. She's absolutely fine. One more question. Yeah, th if I look at the first half, well, second half is the gaps were too big. The distances between uh, players horizontally and vertically were way too big. N normally in football, it's, it, you're trying to create one free player. From there, you're trying to create the next free player. Yeah, England had two or three free players in possession. And at that point, I should have made it tighter and, and got the organisation more compact. Yeah, I would have let go of, of uh, some attacking moments if I did that. Yeah, it's a good lesson for me, and that's where where I I heard outside the individuals and players being a bit negative of themselves. Yeah, I can't accept that because the situation and the circumstances were not putting the players in a position to succeed. It was putting them in a very tough place. So that's the second half. First half, yeah, it's... Uh, England broke our defending, uh, our block, our pressing, I think twice. They got Walsh free once. They got Kirby free when she was rotating wide and Hemp came inside. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, two moments. And against the team with that quality, a lot of attacking quality, I think that's good. That's a good starting point. Yeah, and goals change games. Um, we should take the lead before half time. We should after half time. And you could feel the momentum shift, of course. Uh, that second goal for them, the game, the game was a different game when that went in because of what just happened as well. Yeah, when you're tired and then your, your emotions go as well, it's going to become very hard. I think you had a second question. Uh, yeah, just one more, if I may. Um, how much do you read into this just because it's two weeks away now? Yeah, I think Shaw is first 60 minutes, read into it a lot. The last 30, I'm uh, just not going to waste any time. The mistake that I've made has been made, and yeah, it's move on, um, let that go. I don't think there's any value apart from us doing what I said we should have done. But the first 60 is going to be a lot of positive uh, lessons, a lot of critical lessons that are going to be very valuable. Belarus are going to come, they're going to work hard, they're going to fight, they're going to be aggressive in their defending. We've got to be ready to, to be a bit better on the ball and more clinical in front of goal. Um, yeah, it's also, we heard that from England last week, they wanted to be more clinical. You, you can't wave the magic wand and everyone is back from the beach ready to be perfect. It takes time. We've got two good games to, to fine tune and, and be ready for Sweden. Hey, thanks. And I forgot to say this yesterday, it's a big pleasure to be in a media room with this many people watching and supporting women's football. Thank you for your commitment. Hopefully it's getting big enough that you are getting what you deserve to to uh, to put attention on it. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.